Hello, welcome Pirate fans to a special episode on BergFan.com today. You are, and you heard that voice, that is the one, the only, the Duke. So the Duke joins me today. Uh, I am Tom Tebow. But I promise you one thing, a lot of good will come out of this. You have never seen any player in the entire country play as hard as I will play the rest of the season, and you never see someone push the rest of the team as hard as I will push everybody the rest of the season. And you never see a team play harder than we will the rest of the season. God bless. And I can remember when you actually said yeah, that. Yeah, that, that is my promise to you, Pirate fans. And I am joined by the Duke. That's right. The Duke, Rob Willard from Bird Fan. He is a rude boy now, let me tell you. That is, that is our oh, gift man. to you, the Duke. Oh, my gosh. That's, that's <laughs> probably one of the best I'll get this year. <laughs> All man. right. So, we talked, and we wanted to kind of have, for one, this is this is a two-part kind of a, a setting. So, if you've, know, if you've let, listened to a couple of our basketball podcasts, you've noticed that we've had some technical difficulties. So, a couple times. Um, a yeah. Couple so, times. basically, Duke sent me to the principal's office, and he right. sat down and showed me some uh, – trick so hopefully we can start minimizing those difficulties and get going i but, paddled myself <laughs> while i was in here too they said that's not allowed anymore I don't know. that's frowned upon now I don't know. but i did want to ask the duke some questions because you know so many people are able to enjoy berg fan um and it, it's it's reach is becoming i think and we'll get to this but you know, something that no one really thought could possibly, you know, it, it's exceeded expectations, I think. And, and so tell me a little bit of just, in general, the start of Berg Fan, like why you came up wanting to do Berg Fan. Well, you know, this we we came up with this idea. It wasn't just mine alone. Uh, we go back to 2005. Uh, you were probably 19 years old, yep. roughly. Uh, I think Jonathan, uh, uh, Ben, and I were just looking for different ways. You know, we were sitting in the old stadium underneath the bleachers mm-hmm. and the water's pouring in, and we're thinking, what's something different we can do that nobody else is doing that that maybe can help us, you know, build some more excitement and maybe even raise some money with it. But more importantly, let's build some excitement around the program and let's see what we can do different. And I just happened to have – uh, you know, an education in IT uh, programming. I do a little bit of web design. Uh, so I thought, why not? Let's try a, a website. And so that's kind of what it started with. And, uh, you know, we we did some things with that. And uh, then I owe a lot of credit to, to, to Mean Gene for really pushing me to take it to the podcast level, which is where Bergfan really started to take off. Uh, and it started out as just, a couple buddies wanted to listen to the game that couldn't be at the game. Right. And uh, my nephew at the time, Andy D. Camp, was overseas. He wanted to be able to listen to the games. So, you know, I have obviously some expertise in the area, and I thought, you know, I can do it. Why not? So just a little bit of research and a couple of different services uh, and a pretty decent size investment to start with. Uh, we were able to do it. Uh, the first time we did it was uh, Eugene talking on a cell phone, <laughs> calling in to my house to a phone that was hooked up to an old desktop computer. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> and broadcasting it that way. That was the first one. Do you and, remember what game that was? No, I don't. Yeah. I, I would have to go. It's 2011. Yeah. I do know that. It was 2011. Uh, so that's how long we've kind of been on the air. And I think we had three listeners. So that was a that was a, that was a pretty big thing, and yeah. we thought, yeah, heck, man, three people actually <laughs> listen to us, <laughs> and, and uh, kept listening, right? <laughs> <laughs> and it was probably the Costers on Pinehurst, which I always call the Coasters, because yeah. they make all the pickles, but, <laughs> <laughs> um, but you know, that's that's where it started, um, you know, with me and Gene kind of pushing me. Um, I, I think he was the the motivating factor for me to take it to uh, to a level of where we could broadcast games and, and the feedback I started receiving early was 
was amazing. Thank you for what you're doing. You know, you're, you're great at it. You should have been doing this all along. And I listen to myself, and I think I'm not really very good. Yeah. I mean, I that, that's I how I feel now good. that I've started this. <laughs> you know? But you know, the feedback you get is this is great. I get to listen to Wheelersburg games. It's it's my people that are broadcasting the game. It's great. And when I watch like an Ohio State game or or a Bengals game. And I'm a fan of those teams, unfortunately, for the Bengals. But <laughs> when you get a broadcaster who is kind of biased the other way, it's it's frustrating to listen to. Yeah, absolutely. So I, I can understand when other fans listen to us and say, these guys are awful. Yeah. Or, you know, I understand that as well. But I also understand the excitement that it brings to the people who are fans of us and how much more entertaining it can be from that aspect of it. Yeah, cause, I mean, that's what I was going to say is, I mean, in this area, obviously you have limited, I guess, media coverage. Now, not the knock, you know, I think the Portsmouth Daily Times Sports, they're they're doing much better oh, here as, as of late. WNXT yes. has always had a lot of coverage for a lot of teams, but there's just so many daggone teams that they can't really show their, I guess you would say, favoritism, um, unless it is, say, like a state championship where right. we're facing a team out of near Toledo. Yeah. Uh, then they can show some excitement, you know. So that was always my favorite part of uh, of listening to you guys um, is, for one, the, the, the fandom uh, aspect. And then just the – just the little things you guys would do with like write down Bonnie camp and you know all right. all the you know pine, talking about Pinehurst and I I could imagine now obviously I live here so that's you know fresh to me every day but someone out of town that used to live in Wheelersburg what kind of memories um, you guys are bringing up when you say those little uh, right. trigger words that that uh, that they grew up with so Shout I out think to Hammerstein yeah. yeah they're probably getting hammered right now actually <laughs> I mean it's about that time yep. <laughs> So, do you have a um, favorite moment of, of – I mean, you've, two, since 2011, you said it's first game. Um, you've, you guys have broadcast a lot of games. Yeah. So, do you have a favorite moment that sticks out in your mind? I have two favorite moments, actually. Um, one, uh, the first of the favorite moments was uh, I broadcasted um, – uh, I have more state championships than you, by the way. <laughs> uh, I broadcasted uh, – uh, obviously, um, the baseball state championship. Yes, uh, twice. Uh, but the second time around, I was able to do that with Eugene and my nephew Andy, who had just come back from uh, war overseas, and uh, and we won that game. And the incredible ending with that uh, was was something I'll never forget. And uh, and, and number two would be uh, just what happened recently. With, yeah, with the with the state championship and. Uh, you know you can't you can't ever expect a moment like that to happen in your life and uh to think that it actually did happen still really hasn't sunk in you, you know and, and I'm the same way and obviously I'm on the on the other end of it of that with comes to football but Brent and I were talking and just a little bit of we've done this now and how enjoyable it is we said man that would have been really cool to to do a game <laughs> to do a state championship game that Wheelersburg's winning um, so hopefully, you know, if we can do this in uh, basketball or, or baseball. But, you know, people have asked me just kind of like – and what you just said kind of hits home because they've asked me, you know, what, what's it like and all this other stuff. And I'm like, man, I can't even describe it because it's something that is a dream of yours since I was a player at Wheelersburg. You know, you start thinking about it in really junior high. and um, But you're still not sure. And when I played, I think people were, were excited. We knew we were good, and we started having the team. And as the season started going, we are like, man, we're, we're good enough. We can compete. Right. But you still, there was that little bit of doubt. And then the run we've had here lately, we knew. Like, we knew this was, this was it. Like, this was the time to do it and, and, and get, get some of this momentum that we've had and, and get over that hump. And so, obviously, we, we just came out and talked about it all year. And, but it's still, like you said, something that doesn't even re still register to you. Like, Hey, it's going to happen. Like, right. yeah, we, we knew we like, that was our goal. And, and we knew we were good enough and can compete, but it's still, it's like, you just, you live in the moment and, 
it, it was just, it was just crazy. And like you said, it, I don't even know if it's still – it's starting to, like right. little moments and all this like obviously stuff that's out there and, and different stuff you see. Um, you know, we were just – we had a – uh, Coach Wilbert had a, the coaches kind of a get together the other day, and you can just tell just how happy everybody is, and just in the community, just so how, how happy everybody is, and so it's starting to sink in. But it's just uh, yeah, and, it, and it's not really the end; it's kind of a it's a beginning almost. Uh, once you've reached that, you know it's it's a it's a fresh outlook for everybody. You right, know, people start to believe things are possible that were were believed to be impossible. Right. And uh, that spirals, um, you know, throughout the community into other aspects. You know, it's going to affect how the basketball team performs. It's going to affect, you know, every athletic department here. It's going to affect your academics. Uh, it's going to affect community. It just, it, it's a sense of pride that, that, that really will help uh, Wheelersburg. Yeah, I mean, you just look at the little things that um, stuck out to outsiders that came and covered us for because of maybe based on the team that we were playing or, or whatnot. And just, uh, you know, the one newspaper writer from um, Middletown Madison, he was just like, oh, my gosh, I've never seen so many signs right. in, in a school building. And, you know, that stuff just doesn't happen by accident. Right. That's somebody that took time out of their day, away from their family, away from their kids uh, for nothing. Right. Or nothing in return other than they made someone smile. Yeah. And motivated someone. So. But yeah, that's that that's the that's the pride you're talking about and it's uh an on a unbelievable high right now. I mean we've always had it. Yeah. Um but so now, I mean, if you go back into I guess our football slogan, I think now we just keep keep it there now. Like that's that's I the agree. standard and then we can keep going higher from there and uh get better every time. Like you said this podcast, it started through a desktop computer calling into your house, yeah. you know, and then look where we are now. We can set up here in about, took us about 10 minutes and we're on Wi-Fi internet and we bring get, our studio with us. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, uh, so just, you know, and I think that's what you guys have done is, is, um, just whether it be with technology or just the more you do it, the more comfortable you get and just get better every day. And, um, so hopefully we can continue to do that as a community, as athletic program, academic program, um, and go from there. I think you guys have started off a lot better than we did. <laughs> you know, you had uh, you know, a couple of technical issues there, and those do uh, kind of stress you out right before the game because, you know, you're, you're in a hurry to get set up and then something goes wrong. And, and I think you guys have just done a great job recovering from those and, and – uh, and, Luckily, I've, you know, I guess kind of fought some of those battles and can help out a little yeah, bit. Well when that, it comes to yeah, well, that's, yeah. I mean, that's the thing is we, you know, we got you and Eugene. You guys are right there on the phone with us, ready to to pounce on any. Um, I think Eugene started heading to the, uh, to the game. He's, I'll be there in 10 yeah, minutes. You want me right. to come? And I said, yes. <laughs> and then I think on midway on his way here, he, uh, he, he had started to. started working for you guys. Yeah, it started working, so he turned around. But yeah. I think that's what he gets. Did, did I tell you what he did to me the first? podcast of the yeah, season he bailed on he you. Just, yeah he didn't he didn't tell me he was leaving all of a sudden we're just in the middle of the podcast he looks at his phone and says um i'm gonna go to the concert i'll i'll be back later i'm like what <laughs> <laughs> so that's yeah so that's that's was he going to quiet riot or? i think he was right. yeah cool. he was yeah i think he was gonna go and get in a mosh pit <laughs> So, do you have anything else you want to add about Berg Fan? Uh, I mean, I know, uh, like you said, donations. You know, we have some good sponsors, but if you would like to donate personally, you can go to bergfan dot com yep. and you can donate anywhere from three to fifty dollars, and and we greatly appreciate that. And that goes to upkeep of the equipment, um, travel cost, uh, tournament cost, because if any time we broadcast in the tournament, there is cost associated with that. Yep, and you know you can you can do that as a fan. Uh, you do get a receipt for that. You know it's not something that you know we're just asking you to give us three dollars in a bucket. You get a receipt for it. Uh, it's a purchase, uh, and what's coming soon to that too will be products you'll be able to purchase on there, uh, where that profit will go towards uh, uh, whatever sport that it's geared for. For so if it's a football item, that that profit from that money is going to go to the football account. Uh, things like that, and, and that was one of the things. And, and this this kind of is really the reason Berg fan, I guess, started for me. Uh, what motivated me to do it was everything starts with 
football. And this this is my opinion speaking. This right. is not – I'm not talking fact here. Uh, everything everything starts with football. Um, it's the first season of the, of the year, obviously, in a school year. But it also draws the biggest crowd, brings in the most cash – and you don't get anywhere without football. I mean, what could we do without the money that comes in from football? It would be really, really difficult to uh, come up with uh, a lot of the things the school does without football. And a lot of that wealth is redistributed. Right. Um, and it's for a good cause. Don't get me wrong. You know, that money has to be spent for educational purposes and for other students to have opportunities in other sports as well. That's what it's for. But I also thought football maybe is not getting a real fair shake at it because here we are sitting in a stadium that's being flooded and the grass is, you know, 10 foot lower on one side than it is the other. Right. And so that that really got me going in in that direction uh, with Burke fan. Now, you know, I, I said our first broadcast was three people that listened. Uh, our last and we had over 5,000. That's awesome. So. Uh, we averaged about a thousand per game this this football season, which was our highest, um, the best we've done, and we have steadily increased every year. Uh, the complaints have steadily increased every year, right? And, and you know, I I take credit for that too. I, mean, <laughs> I don't I don't really hold anything back. I, I kind of put on a character face sometimes and and, and be a uh, uh, over the top Berg fan. You know, it's not always. Rob Willard talking. It's, right. It's the Duke. It's the Duke, and, and it's over the top. Some people love it. Some people don't. I understand both sides, both points of view, but I just do what I do, and, and I and I and I love it, and that's why I keep doing it. Right. And and I think in the main reason, and this is what uh, you know, someone asked Brent the other day because he's you know he's like someone's like why are you why are you doing this. And Brent's answer was simple, and I think it's the same answer as you, because we love the kids, right? And it, it's it's for the kids, it's for it's for the community, it's for um, the people that you know obviously can't make it to a game um, and want that little bit different, uh, I guess, style, you yeah. know. And and you know your style is going to be different than mine and Brent's. We're not going to try to force that, so we'll kind of do our thing, and, right? And because um, I think that's going to make it better for if you're trying to force someone and trying to be someone you're not, then that's when you run into trouble. So, I mean, I, so, I, you know, um, so to, to me, to you and I think all Berg fans, we appreciate you doing this, starting this um, w- without you, your expertise, without you doing this. We, we want to be here now and and uh, having 5000 people be able to listen to a state championship game when there's already about. 6,000 Berg fans in the stadium. Right. And it's on TV and it's on how many radio stations. And, and yeah, it's it's amazing how many people. Uh, I think we're adding, you know, everybody can watch the TV show. Everybody can tune into the FM radio. I think we're adding additional uh, fans with, with Berg fan, people who previously could not reach uh, right pop broadcast of Berg fan. And I know a lot of people that um, – Especially on a long away game, on the they'll go to the game and then on the way home, be able to play that episode and and hear some of you guys' one liners and <laughs> and all that. And um, I know that I mean I know a ton of people that you know are able to do that. So so we appreciate that. I can say that nothing excites me more than than when I get a message from a player or from a player's parent that just that's just a thank you, just a simple thank you, and that's that you know that that makes my. Uh, not only motivates me further, but just it just it, it makes my day. Yeah, I makes it. Ma- yeah, makes all the all the hard work and all the the things you've had to tweak and, and sacrifices you've made. Cause you've made some sacrifices too to do this, and it makes it worth it. Yep. All right. Well, we appreciate you guys listening in and join us tonight, where the Pirates will take on the Portsmouth Trojans in boys basketball. That game is at Wheelersburg tonight. You will have. Myself and Boston Brent on the call, and a special guest, Juicy J. Juicy J. Juicy J. Oh, I'm so kind of excited about that. Yes, I don't, I'm not a, sure really who that is. Um, you have to tune in to find out. All right. 
we did not run a background check on him, so we will have to. Uh, <laughs> this we're one taking a risk. On yeah, that. this one we kind of kept under the radar, so we snuck him by the Duke. Can I can I throw in one more football thing? Yes. Before well, I know we're in basketball, but um, you know, people have asked me what I thought, and people ask me about what I think about Wheelersburg football, or what we should have done here, or what. Why do you think they did this? <laughs> why do you think they've done that? And I don't have those kind of answers. I'm yeah. not, not a coach, and I don't spend. I'm a coach, I, but I don't. I'm not a coach at Wheelersburg, and I don't spend hours per day with with the kids uh, that you guys do. But somebody asked me something that I can't answer, which was, "What do you think was the moment of the season that really defined the season, and and what got them to the championship?" And, and to me personally, I think it was during the Columbus Academy game. Um, we were down. Your offense was terrible. Mm -hmm. um, not that your players weren't given 100 percent effort; they just had you guys kind of figured out. They were yeah. they were good athletes there, and they, the, the they had a great game yeah, plan. The matchup with the, with their athletes and our athletes in the game plan. Yes. What I thought was the defining decision for the whole season was the adjustment you made, but not only the the adjustment that you made, but how you made it. You were patient. You didn't do it before halftime. Mm -hmm. You do it before halftime, the other team's got a chance to adjust back to it. Right. You guys were patient. You went down maybe extra three points that you didn't want to, uh, but you were patient. You waited for it. You came out, and you just went smash mouth, and, and that, I think that set the tone for the rest of the season. Yeah, I mean, I agree, and, and, and that's something that, uh, you know, People think that we just kind of drew it on the board at halftime. I mean, that's something we've been working on for right. for all season. It's yeah. just um, – and then, you know, you put in a little bit of it early in the year for basically short yardage almost. Um, but then, you know, you're good with that, and then you start adding to it, and now you got your own little second offense. Yep. Um, and obviously we'd like to be in our one tight end, one back sets and be able to spread it out and get it to a lot of different people and, and still be able to run the ball and power it that way. Um, but like you said, it, it wasn't working against Academy, yep. and they had a good game plan. They had um, good athletes that were able to neutralize our athletes. Yeah, their front four was it was incredible. I yeah, mean, they were they were as good as anybody in, in the state of Ohio. Yeah, I think that front four was as well as a couple of the teams you faced afterwards. Oh my, yeah, oh my <laughs> goodness, especially yeah, Eastwood. They're, they're well, yeah, Matt, all of those guys. They, yeah. I mean, downtown Monroe. I mean. Yeah. Yeah, our offensive line had to uh, go up against some bad dudes. Yeah. Um, and, and, you know, credit to them. and They battled every game. Um, but, you know, so – but and that was the thing with our kids is they – there was no panic at halftime of that game, just like there was no panic at halftime of the Madison game. Um, and just like, hey, this is what we got to do, and here's what, here's what we think will work. And everyone went, okay. Right. You know, and that and that says a lot to our team. Um, not only to be prepared, but also when we go to those sets, you got you're taking a few athletes off the field, right? <laughs> and so, and they were like, "Hey, <laughs> do it!" You know, yeah. if that's what's going to work. Yeah. And you know, credit to them. And I think that was, um, you know, the biggest thing with our team is just the focus. Like that's what everyone's sole focus this year was win the state championship. And we knew we could do it, and we still we still had to have things go our way. But we were prepared. Our kids were pre prepared, and I think that shows the younger kids going forward. I think this will springboard us to say, "Hey, this is why we're working on Brown package." And and uh, you know, I know we haven't used it in three weeks, but right. we got to keep working it. And, and this get is why good. it's six thirty, and we're still here today. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So um, you know, hopefully, I think that will be a huge lesson to some of the younger. Uh, Pirates and, and, and going forward there. Yep. And, you know, people always want to compare, well, which was better? And I've had this question, too. What, what, which was better, 1989 team or the 2017 team? There's absolutely zero way to compare that. It's two totally different worlds. Right. Both teams were the best teams ever. Yeah. That's all I'll say about yep. it. Yep. So. And, yeah, we feel the same way. I mean, just to to play in those different generations, it was just different. I mean, yeah. it, um, and, and credit to our – uh, I had this conversation last night with a player that um, I used to play with, and he was kind of asking about our offense. And he's like, man, it almost looks like a college-type offense with all the stuff you guys do. And then he brought up the academy game. and But then you're able to just go power. And he's like, man, 
I bet your kids are smart, and and that's the thing. Yeah. I mean, they are really smart. Um, it, academic, the academic All Ohio, they take your top twenty two players GPA that earn a varsity letter, their GPA, and they do not separate it by division. So last year we were sixth in the state. That's statewide. Statewide. That's yeah. up against Cincinnati St. X, Cincinnati Moeller, Bishop Hartley, all those schools. We were sixth in the state. Um, I can't remember. I think the GPA was like 3.91. Wow. Now this year it fell off just a little bit um, to 3.86. Who's to blame? I need to know. I would say uh, Nick Nugget is okay. most to blame. All right. And well, in, in, uh, Curious George. I would blame Curious George? Yeah, I, bl- really? I would blame those two. <laughs> I'm disappointed in Curious George, but Nick Nugget, I can understand. Yeah. So, but this year it was 3.86, and we were 15th in the state. So I just think that's it right there. I it mean, is. I mean, without that, we're not able to do all this stuff. I mean, you see teams, um, you know, we sit sometimes and like, man, they just keep doing the same thing over and over. And it's like, well, they might not have a choice. Right. Because it is hard to, to be able to, um, you know, work on all those different things. And our kids, I mean, there's times where we have to run a play and it's like, hey, guys, I know we haven't worked on this in practice because we do have so much stuff. You can't work on it all, yeah, all week. So, obviously, we have 7,000 plays. So, we're working on all the game plan stuff, you know, but then when that goes out the window and times it does, it's like, hey, guys, remember four weeks ago when we ran this? Right. Let's, it, it's there. Let's yep. do it. And the kids don't miss a beat. And like, oh, okay, this and is it, what I do. And, you know, the straight-up answer is yes, it is, it is a college offense. It's a college program that you guys run, and it's, you know, from top to bottom, it's excellence. Um, you, you'll you'll find Division three colleges out there that don't have what Wheelersburg has. Um, I played Division three college football. We didn't have what Wheelersburg has. Um, you know, Coach Haycock was one of my, was my head coach. I uh, went on to coach at Ohio State and, you know, other places as well didn't have the resources that that Wheelersburg has as a high school to to build such a program and uh, it's just amazing um, what the community does and what the school does you know Mr. Knapp does a, a fantastic job keeping things uh, in order uh, you know Mr. Porter obviously does a great job Mr. Shaw does a horrible horrible <laughs> job um, so I don't know it's like his golf game him. yeah yeah <laughs> No, uh, Mr. Shaw is the, uh, and I, I keep reminding him, him this, he is the state winningest AD in Wheelersburg history. So uh, congratulations to Shaw. He has more state championships than any of us. Yeah, I mean, he had, and he, even me as just a lowly assistant coach, anytime I get a hold of him for something and normally it's I'm bugging him about a, trying to get program ads done or something like that. He is always – he treats me like it would be if it was Rob asking. Um, so, he, yeah, he does – he is great to, uh, to I think, head our athletics and, and does an outstanding job. Yep. Hope he sticks around for a while. And, and before we go, I know you want to go. I got to go too, but I got one question for you. Okay. Um, you know, a part of uh, football coaching and a normal progression of football coaching, when you, when you have uh, – a coaching staff assembled like like Coach Woodward has and you guys have. Usually when you get uh, guys winning championships, offensive coordinators, defensive coordinators start getting uh, offers or uh, become free agents to look at head coaching jobs. And you don't have to answer this if you're not comfortable right. with it. But, I, I mean, is that something maybe that down the road that you're looking at maybe doing? Because obviously you're, you could probably go anywhere you want to. Um right now well the probably two or three years ago the immediate answer would have been yes absolutely you know that would have been a goal of mine um but honestly after the last couple of years on just feeling like i'm part of you know something that is bigger than me and something that i've helped um you know my port my way of helping build along with you know everybody else um, it makes it tough. Yeah. It and, does. and I have a great situation as a teacher and obviously that comes first. Um, and, and I, I love what I teach, where I teach. Um, and then on top of that, you see, I love calling offense Yeah, and 
you know, part of that was always just in my mind, like, okay, yeah, that's the natural progression. But then I see, like, how, and this is what people don't realize, like, how well and how good Rob is at all the other stuff. Yeah. Of, you know, you know, obviously we, you know, I call the offense, Chad calls the defense, Jonathan takes care of special teams, but Rob has his hand in all of it um, and has his pulse, you know, on all of it and, and sometimes even has to make some decisions with, with a lot of it. So, right. but then just all the other stuff. I mean, you look at the state championship week, um, you know, dealing with, all right, what hotel we staying in? How many rooms do we need? You know, what time is the buses leaving? Okay, well, this changed because now the mops need to do the send off at 315 or whatever. And, okay, well, this place isn't open that late, so we can't do that, feed the t- team at that time. And, right. And I'm just like, oh my gosh! But then there's the millions of eligibility factors, right? And, and all of the all of the paperwork and all of the stuff that goes into being a head coach. And yeah, I see where you're coming from there, and, and that's kind of it's refreshing to hear that. You know, in my professional life too, I've you know gone through the normal progression of okay, what's the next step up? And I have actually been to where I was promoted higher than where I should have been, and and it affected not only the organization I was with, but you know my personal professional life as well so there there comes a time where you're at the spot where you need to be and uh, i don't know if you're there that may ch- that's going to change for you yeah on the road you may want more of a challenge in it, 10 years from now and that and that's <laughs> funny you say that because i i actually had this conversation with somebody and and i said that i said you know i i do worry I, like i'm in the spot where i want to be right now and like you said, down the road, I might feel like, all right, I'm, I want another challenge because it would be a challenge. Yeah. You know, and obviously, you know, you, if you do take a head coaching job, it's not like everything's roses when you get there. Obviously, there's probably a reason why the person before you is not there no more. Right. Um, you know, in some situations, it's not always that because of retirement and things like that. But Or maybe they took a step up somewhere. But, um that that's that's five percent you're right so most of the time it's because well this program's not doing very well because they went out of 10 and yeah didn't make the playoffs yeah so so fix it you know and and i did uh before i got so i taught here for a year then took a couple years off um but when i came back before i knew exactly what was going to be open here i mean i was offered a couple jobs um but i just knew that it just wasn't the right time it wasn't the right place um and and i feel like i'll, I'll always probably have that excuse yeah. just just because of where i am and it and it would be so hard uh to to you know to do some of those things i know jonathan told me if i ever went to ironton he would never talk to me ever again <laughs> in his life and i kind of chuckled like that and he goes i'm not joking <laughs> so but, well, he, he tells uh, you know he tells uh, Eugene the same thing that his his <laughs> one job at Ironton is to start a soccer program. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so That's yeah, good. we like that. But uh, you know, I think, and I know everybody. You know, if you decided and to take a, to take a, a head coach job at another school, even around here or anywhere else down the road, if that's a challenge you want to take, everybody around here would have your back on that decision because you've earned it. Right, thank you. You've earned the right to make that decision. Appreciate it. Yep. All All right, right. that's all I got. Okay, all right. Well, this is Tom Tebow signing out and with the Duke. The Duke of Earl signing out. The Duke, Rob Willard from Bird saying he is a rude boy. Now let me tell you. All right, reminder, boys basketball tonight. Tip, uh, we'll get on air approximately about 7.10. See you, Berg fans.